Praise the Lord. We greet you in the precious name of Jesus. It's so good to be able to be with you tonight by way of this video. I trust that you are enjoying the blessings of the Lord. As we have said in previous videos, we want to remember those on the front line of this pandemic fighting against this virus. Families that have been affected by it, those that have lost loved ones, the first responders, the doctors, nurses, EMTs, all those who might be involved in trying to assist and aid in discovering a cure for this virus, a vaccine uh, to be uh, able to prevent it from continuing to spread. And so as we go to the Lord in prayer tonight, I request that you remember those in leadership, those in the natural world of leadership and those in the spiritual world world of leadership that God will guide us all with his knowledge and his wisdom father we come to you in the name of Jesus and thank you again for this great privilege to be gathered together by way of this video to worship you in spirit and truth we pray for your anointing upon this word the anointing upon these lips of clay that I may speak as the oracle of God those things which you have given me for this hour. We pray for the first responders, the doctors, the nurses, the EMTs, firemen and policemen, wherever they may be, all those who are working out in the public and have to protect themselves against the virus. We pray that the hand of God will be upon them and that special covering of mercy and grace will keep them from being infected by this virus we pray for the leaders of our country we pray for your wisdom and guidance for each of them that you will direct their thinking and uh, toward the lines of finding a uh, vaccine and even a cure for this terrible virus that has taken us by storm i pray oh god for our church leaders uh, around the world our missionaries across the ocean, those here in the United States. I pray for all, Lord, to have the covering of your grace and mercy and special protection against this terrible virus. We pray for those families that have already lost loved ones. Many have died because of this terrible virus. And I know that the suffering and the, the, the pain, that uh, the mourning that each family is going through is terrible especially at this time when they feel so alone i pray that they will feel the comforting hand of the lord upon each of them and we'll give you praise and glory in jesus precious name amen and amen i know across the country many of the governors in the different locales have some have extended the uh more toward they have extended the special uh, instructions as far as uh, this pandemic. Uh, we pray that uh, in those areas where they have uh, laxed and relaxed those uh, orders and are allowing businesses to open, and in some cases churches are able now to open up, uh, certainly under the guidelines of the, C, uh, of the uh, Center for Disease Control. And we pray that the Lord will uh, help them, will guide them, and give them wisdom. We're praying for those churches that are still yet not able to open, and some that are considering opening, that uh, as they uh, practice the, the uh, regulations and the rules that have been passed out, the recommendations by uh, the CDC, that the Lord will bless those that do come together and meet and his spirit will move mightily in the midst, protecting the pastors and uh, those that have part in leadership and the congregations from any further infection. I want to talk to us tonight from familiar scripture. Uh, we know that the book of Daniel has much prophetic word in it concerning the end time. And I know that this uh, pandemic may not uh, really uh, be what we would consider part of the end time 
But I think that what has happened has happened for a reason and a purpose. And I believe it's God allowing us to see some things that uh, were once covered and veiled. Uh, I, I know that God desires for us to be ready for His coming. And now that we're going through this terrible time, there's a lot of decisions that pastors have had to make, whether they would meet, not meet, follow the guidelines, not follow the guidelines, whatever. I know it's been difficult for many, many good men of God who have prayed diligently and sought God as to the direction that they ought to take for their assemblies. I really believe that, as I've said previously, that the Lord had shown me that this was one way that the enemy, if you will, was testing the waters of the government reaction and response and of the church's reaction and response to all of these regulations that suddenly came upon us and had to be applied uh, to each of us around the country in each location where uh, the spread of the uh, virus is worse than in other locations and how each person has responded to that. I really believe that God has allowed us to see how the enemy can test the waters and see if uh, what he has to do in order to bring more power into his reach and grasp. So I go to the Lord, word of the Lord in the book of Daniel, chapter 5 and verse 12. And we read there in verse 12, For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same, in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar, now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. In Daniel chapter 6 and verse 3, we find then that this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. We know that Daniel, and we refer to them as the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were carried off by King uh, Nebuchadnezzar into Babylon Babylonian captivity. There's much that could be said. I could set a foundation, probably take the whole time of this video tonight, just setting a foundation. But I need to fast forward quickly into the message tonight to talk to us on this subject, an excellent spirit in the worst of times. An excellent spirit in the worst of times. Paul tells the church that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And when we study out that word treasure, we find that Paul is referring to the Holy Ghost, talking about how we have the Spirit of God in this human flesh, in our spirits. And we have been born again by water and spirit, repenting of our sins, baptized in Jesus' name, and filled with the Holy Ghost, that treasure in earthen vessels. It's only because of the Spirit of God in us that we have been renewed in the Spirit. For the Bible tells us that all things pass away and all things become new. And when we are baptized in Christ, we become new creatures. As we studied in the book of Daniel about the captivity of Israel, the Babylonian captivity, Daniel and the three Hebrew children especially are mentioned over and over again in the book of Daniel. We know in chapter 9 there's much to be said about the prophetic. But as I was studying and I was reading these scriptures for this message tonight, God continued over and over again to remind me why Daniel was caught in cap or brought in captivity to the Babylonian Empire. 
God had a purpose and God had a plan to use Daniel and the three Hebrew children for his purpose. Daniel even speaks of one time in the scripture, he asked God to forgive him because we have sinned, speaking about the corporate sin of Israel. No, I don't believe that Daniel was the chief of sinners amongst those in Israel. But because of his uh, connection with Israel as a Israelite, Daniel knew that when Israel had sinned against God and disobeyed God and rebelled against God, that all of God's wrath being poured out on Israel, those uh, enemies of Israel were allowed to come in and capture Israel, take them captive. So Nebuchadnezzar took the captives of Israel back into uh, the child Israel. Now, as we study the Word of God, we find that Nebuchadnezzar had dreams that God gave him, but he could not understand them. And his wizards and his uh, seers could not interpret those dreams. And so they searched throughout the land of Babylon, trying to find someone who could interpret those dreams. And even in captivity, even at a time when his freedom had been taken away from him. It was found of Daniel, and it was said of Daniel, this man is a man who can interpret your dreams. And the Bible, as we take it tonight in the scripture that we were using, chapter 5, verse 12, they come now to the king to explain to him, there's a man in your kingdom that can interpret your dream." It says, for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts, were found in that same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. We know that Daniel was called to the king. And as the king began to tell him of his dreams, Daniel said, I will talk to God about this dream and I will give you an interpretation. We know that there was much to be said about how God used Daniel, even while he was in captivity. And I believe at this very point of time that we're in right now, there are many that God is using to show his praises and to show forth His power, His mercy and grace through those who are willing to stand up and stand up against uh, a wicked uh, kings and wicked governments are paying the price for it. Some of them uh, unfairly treated because they're resisting the mandates of the government. I say again, it's, it certainly appears to be an opportunity for the enemy to find out how much territory he can take away from the church and how much power he can gain from the will of the government. Remember this, Satan has no power in himself. The only power he truly has is when man yields his own will to the devil. So if, God, if governments yield their will to the activity of the enemy, then he has power in the government. Remember what Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. There's princes and powers of the air and over principalities. And so the enemy is trying to gain control and gain a foothold, if you will. I'm not a conspiracy theorist by any means, but I believe that through the scriptures, we could see that how in this time we're living in, the enemy is truly trying to bring the church into captivity in a strange land. It doesn't seem like this country that we're living in right now is recognizable as it was a hundred years ago or even upon its founding when the founding fathers came to this new world and desired to have a government that would leave the church to liberty and the pursuit of happiness and freedom. 
and give us the freedom to practice our faith. And now it seems that uh, the government is finding out that by certain mandates and certain laws and certain rules and certain regulations, given certain circumstances, such as this pandemic, if you will, they can have power over man. I'm telling you tonight, we have to be weary of how much we yield to the power of the enemy. I believe that the Bible tells us again and again, I believe that we should uh, uh, obey them, if you will, the civil laws as much as we can until they cross over into the realm of the Spirit. And when they begin to tell us that we cannot worship our God, that will come one day when they tell us that we will not have the freedom to go into our churches and practice our faith and worship and praise God freely uh, and openly. Uh, that will cross over into that realm of the Spirit. And that's when you and I, if we are here in this world during that time, we will have to make up our minds. Am I going to serve God or am I going to serve the government? Daniel had to make up his mind in the very beginning. Will I serve my God even in captivity? Will I continue to pray? Will I continue to worship Him? I'm now in a place where I'm no longer uh, uh, free to practice my faith. I'm no longer in a place where I'm recognized as an Israelite. I'm now in a place where I'm captive to a foreign king and to a foreign army and under foreign rule. And I'll tell you what, when the church comes under the rule of man, that is foreign rule. The Bible tells us yeah, we have one shepherd. We have one God. We have one head of the church. And that's Jesus Christ. He's established under shepherds. Men and women of God who take their instruction from the Spirit of the Lord and the Word of God to guide and direct the Lord's church on this earth. Some folks have lost their lives while some have only lost things during this pandemic. For some, losing those things is like losing their life because they have cherished those possessions. They have cherished those freedoms. They have cherished, they have made, almost made, if you will, a God out of their living, a God out of their uh, substance when there's only to be one true living God. It's the God of this world that recognizes that man will yield his strength and his will to save his substance, not his life, his substance, the things that he has trusted in, his money, his wealth, his name, his prosperity, his home, his car. He will give up almost anything in order to keep those things in his, uh, the control of those things into his own hand. Right now, we all can say that we haven't endured such contradiction of sinners against ourselves as the Lord did according to Hebrews chapter 12. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Well, thank God the army is not standing outside our doors with guns and weapons drawn, telling us if we cross the line, they'll shoot us dead. Thank God we're not in that place yet where they padlock the church, put a chain around the doors and a padlock, and said you can no longer go into the church and worship God. What we're seeing right now, though, could very well be a prelude to that time that's coming. And I'm not sure that it's many, many, many years off before we'll see it come into being. Jesus warned us again and again and again. He said, if the strong man knew what hour the thief would come, he would be prepared and the thief would not spoil his goods. If we're prepared, if we're prayed up, and it will take prayer, it will take fasting, it will take preparation. Being prepared, we'll have to pray and seek God to tell us, Lord, how do we respond to this a certain situation. How do we respond to the government if they begin to pass edicts upon the church saying we can no longer uh, meet in the church and worship God? 
in some localities, the mayors of those cities have told churches they couldn't even have an open air drive-in service. In fact, in one uh, church, I believe it was in Mississippi, I don't remember now, but uh, they, the mayor of that town uh, told the police to go out to the churches that were having uh, open air church services, drive up services, drive in services, if you will, and issued tickets to the to those worshipers that were there. Five hundred dollar tickets were given to them for being in an open air situation. You can go to the Lowe's parking lot, Walmart parking lot. Uh, you can go to Target's parking lot, and you see it full of cars. You could drive by the front door and look in, and you see people that are closer than six feet apart. Hallelujah. But it's all right for them to do it, but it's not all right for the church to meet. I know that some governors have had a very difficult time making a decision, and some have truly said that they regretted having to, to mandate such regulations upon uh, people. And, uh, uh, but for the sake of others, they said, they mandate these rules. Well, could I suggest to you tonight that the enemy again is just testing the waters to see who will be obedient to the rule of man, who will be obedient to the man-made laws and edicts, if you will, uh, even using the excuse of a pandemic or a terrible a spreading virus gives them the power and the right to cast their uh, laws against the, the uh, operating of businesses and churches. But people have lost loved ones and they've lost goods. Some of them have lost their jobs. Protests around the country let, uh, asking and, and protesting that their businesses and, uh, should be opened back up again. We have to understand something. While we see this on the natural side of it, it is indeed truly uh, the plan, if you will, I believe, of most governments to protect the citizens of that government. At the same time, I, I understand that uh, by doing so and by cooperating, we are protecting ourselves against the spread of that virus. It's difficult for anyone to know whether or not they've even been affected by it, whether they've been uh, in the presence of someone who has been infected by the virus. I heard today of someone uh, not related to me, but someone who just found out that they tested positive for the virus and they'd been in contact with other fam their other family members, which no one knew at the time until the test said they did have the virus. And now they've potentially, if you will, uh, infected other people in their family. Now those individuals are supposed to self-quarantine for at least two weeks until the virus has had time to go through the process before the symptoms actually show. We understand that this is a terrible time and this is a terrible disease that could affect many people. It has already affected hundreds of thousands and thousands of people have died across the world. So I'm not making light of this, but what I want us to understand is just like Daniel, who was a captive, if you will, in a foreign land, who, who, who had to make that decision, am I still going to practice my faith in this captivity? And you and I have to determine in our hearts and our minds, knowing this much, that we have confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ, that if we are willing to by faith, to practice our faith, God will back us up. Hallelujah. God will stand up for us. He said, if you'll be ashamed of me before this sinful generation, he said, I'll be ashamed of you when I come before my Father and the holy angels. And I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed to say that I'm one of his children. And I will practice my faith as much as I possibly can openly as long as God will help me. I want to practice my faith. I want to tell the world. I want to tell the government. I want to tell all of those that I am a child of God and I believe God will protect us and keep his hand upon us. Paul said in 2 Corinthians, which I'd already mentioned this earlier, 
in chapter 4 and verse 7, he said, We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side. In fact, I read this scripture a couple of weeks ago. In verse 8, we are troubled on every side. But Paul says, we are not in distress. Distress is when you have no hope or no help available to you. And you feel uh, helpless that you cannot do anything about your situation. I back up and talk about Daniel again. Finding himself a captive in a foreign land. The chamberlain, if you will, or the, the head of the eunuchs came to Daniel and to the three Hebrew children and said, we've got to prepare you to stand before the king. The king has called and wants your presence. But before you can come to the king, there's some things that we have to prepare you for and prepare you with. One of the things the Bible tells us about in that same book of Daniel they wanted to teach them the language of the Chaldeans so that they could understand the language. But Daniel refused, if you will, to learn another language. He said, I'm going to speak this language that I've been taught and have learned and lived all my life. I liken that to the faith that we have in God. There's not another, praise God. I, don't ask me to believe in another God. Don't ask me to serve another God. Don't ask me to bow down to a king. Don't ask me to bow down to a government. My faith, my hope, my confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ. In all of the church, I challenge you to stand up for Jesus. I believe if you will stand up for the Lord, He will stand up for you. And Daniel said, no, you, you, we don't want to learn the, the, the word or the language of the Chaldees. We, we, we already know the heavenly language and we're going to practice that. And we will not learn the language of another. You see, they were trying to assimilate them into their culture, into their time, and into their world. Teach them their language. Let them eat their food. Uh, they said to Daniel and to the Hebrew children, We're going to bring you the king's meat. And we want you to eat the king's meat. But Daniel said, No, no, we, we can't do that. We won't drink the, the king's wine and we won't eat the king's meat. Amen. The Bible said he told uh, the uh, chamberlain or the head of the eunuchs, if you will. He said, you just let us have what we normally eat. And you give us ten days. And at the end of that ten days, if, we're not, uh, if we don't look better than we look right now, then we'll eat the king's meat. But the Bible says that when the chamberlain came back, when the head of the eunuchs came back, and he looked at Daniel and the Hebrew children, their countenance was even greater and better than it was at the beginning. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, church, if we'll eat the, the king's word tonight, if we will de uh, devour the word of God, if we will ingest the word of God, if we will eat the Word of God, if we will eat that book, hallelujah. I know it's sweet to the taste and sometimes it's bitter to the stomach, amen. But the Word of God will cause the Spirit in us to grow and to live and to have power in God, amen. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. We cannot defile this treasure. There's no place in this spirit, no place in this, this fleshly body for two spirits, hallelujah. We can't serve the world and serve God at the same time. We either have to reject the world and serve God or reject God and serve the world. For those that have lost things, goods, houses, cars, the, those that have lost the, 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 the things of the flesh, they mourn and they grieve. But I know that if I were to lose my relationship with God, it would be a disaster. The king sent word to Daniel. You're not to pray anymore to your God. You're not to pray anymore to Jehovah. But you will pray to our gods. You will bow to our gods. But the Bible says Daniel had a boldness about him. 
He continued to pray to his God. He continued to throw his window open toward Jerusalem. Three times a day for 21 days, he prayed to God Almighty. And of course, those who hated Daniel, those who were jealous of Daniel, those who wanted to defeat and destroy Daniel, told the king of what was happening. And Daniel was cast into the lion's den. Hallelujah. But you know what? Those hungry lions found out you can't mess with a praying man. Praise the Lord. I, don't, I know that Daniel didn't expect the lion's den. That was not his plan. Hallelujah. But just like the book, what, just like it says in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 10, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. But to those that are depending on the world, to those whose God is the world, to those whose substance is of the world, to those whose resource is their own personal strength, their own uh, ability to get gain. To those who have trusted in the world, to lose the world is death to them. It's, more, it's, it, it's worse than dying. Having goods and having things, possessions, and those possessions have literally possessed men to the point that they're willing to give up God in order to keep their possessions. I wonder when the time comes and we, if we have to stand up and say, I will not take the mark. I will not take uh, the mark. I will not take uh, the implant, whatever it is that, it, that they try to implant in us in order to mark us so that we can buy, sell, or trade. If we are willing to stand up and say, I will not take it. We've got to be prepared for the results, for the outcome the side effect, if you will, of that decision. And that will not be a decision that you make lightly. That will not be a decision that you can make on your own unless you've prayed and fasted and prepared yourself. They said, Daniel, don't you pray to your God. If you continue to pray to Him, you're going to suffer the consequences. And the consequences were the lion's den. But oh, thank God, Daniel... He didn't pray to God as an open show. He didn't throw the window up and pray toward Jerusalem so that the world could see he was this uh, religious man and that he was high and, and lifted up. But Daniel prayed to his God as he always had prayed. He prayed no differently. He did not pray in order to be thought well of. He did not pray in order to be the one that they would choose for a high position. He knew the outcome would not be good. <laughs> Hallelujah. If he resisted the decree of the king. But Daniel prayed to his God. Just like he did when he was in Israel. He prayed to his God just like he did when he was called a free man. But now he's in captivity in a foreign land. And a foreign king and foreign government has told him, you can't pray to your God. But Daniel said, I'm going to pray to my God just like I've always prayed to my God. I'll have to suffer the consequences. I wonder, church, are we ready to suffer the consequences if we stand up to the government, if it gets any worse than it is now, if it begins to, to, to dictate to us that we can no longer uh, practice our faith, Will we be able to stand up and say, I'm going to worship my God anyway. I'm going to pray to my God anyway. I'm going to read my word, my Bible. I'm going to follow its edict. I'm going to follow our faith. I'm going to follow the word of God if it means death. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord. How many people will be able to say, I'll, I'm ready to resist even unto blood. But we're told to this point we haven't resisted unto blood. Could it come? Oh, it will. Could come. If you read and study the book of Revelations, there is a time coming when we will be told if we're still on this earth, 
if we haven't been raptured out, if we haven't gone by way of the grave, it'll, there'll be a time coming when they say, unless you accept the mark of the beast, you won't be able to buy, sell, or trade, and you certainly won't be able to practice your faith. As a matter of fact, there'll be those who will be willing to turn you over to the government thinking that they're doing uh, the right thing to protect themselves. There were those who were willing to go tell the king about Daniel praying to his God. What about the three Hebrew children? They were told when the sound of the cornet is heard, you're going to bow and worship the golden idol. You're going to bow and worship the idol that the king has set up. But the three Hebrew children said, we're not, we're not slow to answer. We don't know if God will do it, but we know one thing. We're not bowing to your idol. We don't know if he'll deliver us, but we won't bow to your idol. I'm sure they weren't looking for the fiery furnace. And they weren't looking for it being heated seven times hotter. But they were looking for their God to be with them no matter what happened. I wonder is the church tonight believing that our God is going to be with us no matter what happens. I wonder if the church tonight can say I believe that the Lord is on my side. And as long as I stand up for him, he will stand up for me. I'm not backing down to the mandates of men. I'm going to stand up and practice my faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to preach that Acts 2.38 message. I'm going to tell people they need to repent of their sins. They need to be baptized in Jesus' name. They need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, I think we ought to clap our hands and praise God Almighty. Because we are children of God and God is fighting for us. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in John chapter 16, in verse 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus was speaking these words to his children, to the church. And he said, in this world, you'll have tribulation. Oh, church, there's nothing in this world that's eternal. Everything that you can see that was made by man will melt one day with fervent heat. The Bible even says so. Even the elements, if you will, the earth, the stars, all of that will melt with fervent heat. And the scripture challenges us, knowing this, what manner of man ought we to be in all of our speech and conversation? Do you realize tonight that this world is not going to last forever? But eternity is forever. And your soul is going to live forever. So I admonish you tonight, hold on to Jesus and don't let go. Don't let go of your faith. If you're, if you're discouraged tonight, if you feel weak in your spirit, Weaken your faith. If being out of church all of these weeks, not being able to assemble in the house of God, has caused you to, to, to lose some of your confidence in the God that you serve, then I'm telling you tonight to, to restore that confidence in the Lord and do as David did. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah. These wonderful uh, drive-in services that we've been having on Sunday. We've been hearing a great word of God. And amen, even though we've had to be separated in our own vehicles. And we couldn't get out and shake hands, hug one another's neck. We could at least see each other, wave each other, honk our horns as an amen. Honk our horns as a wor to worship God. Amen. And it was encouraging to me to see the others who, who like me, uh, needed that uh, that time of fellowship with God and that worship and the Word of God. I know we can practice our own faith at home, but the Bible tells us it's better for us to be together when we can be. That that three four fold cord is not easily broken. Why don't we bind together tonight in the name of Jesus before this message ends and pray that God will open the door to the church 
Give us wisdom and guidance so that very soon we can come back together and worship God in spirit and in truth. Not only that, but encourage others. Encourage that backslider. Encourage that sinner. Surely you know someone who needs to hear this message. Surely you know someone that needs to hear uh, the messages that are being preached. Amen. Mark chapter 10 verse 28. Then the Bible says, Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospel's sake, Verse 30, but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the world to come eternal life. But many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. Don't be mistaken. Don't be fooled. This world's not going to last forever. And the world right now may seem like it's in charge of things. But you can rest assured, God hasn't lost control. <laughs> and He hasn't lost, let go of, of being in charge of everything. I'm telling you what, the Lord can show us in just a heartbeat how things can turn around in the favor of the kingdom of God. But we have to have that excellent spirit in the worst of times. And that spirit is that treasure that's in us. Hallelujah. That, that treasure that is in us, in this earthen vessel, that is that excellent spirit that we need in these challenging times. We must not allow the enemy of our soul steal our joy and steal our peace, the peace of God that He gave us that no one can understand. How in such a time as this can you have this kind of peace? I'll tell you how. We have it in the Holy Ghost. We have it as a gift of God, the peace that Jesus said, I live, I leave unto you, I give to you a peace that the world cannot understand. Amen. We have to have an excellent spirit for the worst of times. There's all sorts of talk on social media insisting that we are seeing how easy it would be for the mark of the beast to be instituted. And I'll admit, it doesn't take much more in, some, in, in situations for some individuals that they would be willing to take a mark in order to just have the goods that they have, be able to, to, to operate their business, have their home, drive their car, buy the goods they need. And even in some cases, uh, they feel like it would be necessary to provide for their families. My family is important to me. My children, my wife, my children are all grown and have their own families. But I have grandchildren and I'm concerned about them. I'm concerned about their welfare. I'm concerned about their spiritual welfare. But I believe that what is most important is the condition of our souls, not of the things of this world that we possess. Amen. When that order comes to some who said you must obey in order to be able to conduct your life or your business operations, you've got to take that mark in order to buy, sell, or trade. It could easily happen during this pandemic. I'm not saying it will. But we can see how the devil is watching, how the church is responding I'm sure Daniel wasn't expecting when he went into that line then that he wouldn't come out. I believe he had confidence and faith in his God because it wasn't long after Daniel had prayed when God sent the messenger to him and said, I hear, I heard your first prayer, the very first prayer that you prayed. That will give you confidence. And I believe God hears our prayers. I know He knows who we are, not just by the flesh, but by our spirits, what we're made of. Are we faithful? Will we stand faithful to God? 
I know the children of the three Hebrew children weren't expecting in that heat. They probably were not expecting that fourth man to be in there. But they made a commitment. We will not bow to your idol image. And it was because of that faith and because of that commitment that the fourth man likened to the Son of God walked around in that fire with them. And I believe, children of God, I believe God is going to walk in the fire with us no matter what. We can look and we'll see Him in our situation, in our trials and tribulations. We'll have tribulations in this world. We'll have the enemy trying to take away from us the things that God has given us. Our freedom, our faith, our joy, our happiness, our peace. The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. The king said, I need children in whom there's no blemish, but are well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science. And such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. But Daniel refused to accept the invitation. I just believe the enemy is trying to hand out invitations to us tonight. To invite us to his side. Look how much fame and fortune. Look what you'll find on this side of the fence. Why don't you forget God? Why don't you turn your back on God? I couldn't turn my back on God for any reason. God has never turned his back on me. This world turned its back on me. People of the world turned their back on me. When I needed help and strength and hope and help, there was no one in the world that could give it to me. But I found it in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will too. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Daniel had an excellent spirit in the worst of times. Understand the situation that Daniel it was in, the three Hebrew children was in, it was a terrible, terrible time. A situation that they looked like there was no hope to be retrieved from it. But yet Daniel said, I will practice my faith. The three Hebrew children said, we will not bow to your golden idol, to its image. Daniel said, I will not cease to pray to my God just because I'm in these circumstances. And folks, you and I, we cannot cease to pray. We cannot cease to worship. We cannot, see, see, we cannot forget to seek our God. We cannot cease in practicing our faith. God is still faithful. Above all else, if you can't depend on anyone or anything else, you can depend on God. He will not turn His back on you. He will not forsake you and he will not leave you. He said, I will go with you even until the end of the world. The three Hebrew children, they knew God. They knew that the Jehovah that they'd always worshipped. They grew up in Israel. The word was taught them, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Hallelujah. They knew that God would not forsake them even though they were in captivity. They knew why they were there. Because Israel had sinned. And God had allowed the enemy to take them into captivity. I believe that God has allowed what's going on around us as much as we hate to say it. I know especially for some who have family members that are sick. And some that possibly if they see this. And they've had family members that have been lost because of this virus. They, can't, they won't agree with me. No, I don't believe God had anything to do with this. I believe God had lift, lifted his hands 
from this situation and said, you folks, you've forgotten about me and all of your prosperity and all of the good goods that you've acquired and all of the things that you have. You've forgotten me. You've forgotten about God. And you and I know that this country that we live in it certainly has turned its back on God. And I pray through all this, this terrible time of fighting this virus, of the loss of life and the loss of freedom, that people in this world, in this United States, not just Christians and not just backsliders, but the lost will turn to Jesus. The Father's hearts will be indeed to be turned back to their children. And I believe that there are those that are realizing how serious this is. And this could be just the prelude to what is more serious that could be coming not many years from us now. So I challenge us tonight to have an excellent spirit in the worst of times. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for the unction of the Holy Ghost. I only wish I could have done it more justice it certainly deserves more. I pray that the children of God, the backslider, and maybe the sinner that's watching this video will make a confession of faith, a commitment that they will not back down. Return to the Lord, backslider. Come to God, lost man, lost woman, lost young person. Return to God, child of God, Christian. Uphold your faith. God is upholding you by the right hand of His righteousness. And so I challenge you to uphold your confidence and your faith in God. And not let the enemy steal your victory. And God will bless you and strengthen you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. May His light shine upon you. His peace go with you. His ever-saving hand be upon your life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.